Swing and a miss. Swings through the letter high fastball. So Hogue off to an impressive start. We'll see the Marion Knights bats when we come back to Marion University as you're watching on ISC. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us. Some of the members of the Marion women's basketball team checking out today's action. Of course, they finished as the quarterfinalists a few weeks ago in the NAIA National Tournament. Baseball batting nine is the exact same as it was in game number one. It certainly qualifies if the if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Huntley, Salazar, Lamb, Davenport, Barnes, Estep. Stefan, Raider, Mason, and Hogue gets the start in this game on the pitching mound for Marion. As far as the young man that is on the mound today for Bethel. Today's starting pitcher, Ty Mikowitz. This is his eighth appearance of the season, all as a starter. He has thrown 31 in the third inning so far in the season. He is one in four. 38 hits, 22 earned runs for Ty. And he's allowed three home runs. He has struck out 19. Bethel at four and 23 in league play. We referenced this in the previous game. They're just trying to stay within striking distance of eighth place as they play in the final two weekend series of the season. They play a couple of teams right in front of them in terms of the conference standing. So they're just trying to stay within striking distance. We mentioned the fact that Michael Witz is a senior. He is from just across the state line of from South Bend. He is from Niles, Michigan and he attended Brandywine High School. Of course, given the proximity of Bethel to the state of Michigan, a few Michiganders make their way south to play sports for the Pilots. Marion has wins in this series, 10-1, 5-4, and 12-1 so far. Here comes Huntley to lead things off for Marion. Young man from Newcastle. Play at an Ancilla College, one of the rare junior college programs in this state before making his way to Marion. And that fastball misses outside. Huntley was 0 for 4 with a run scored in the previous game. And he came in batting 409 on the season. Might be sub 400 after this one now. Good poke here, but again, right fielder drifting over and makes the play. Wind that there is is somewhat blowing in today. And there's one down. Now batting for Marion, number 25, second baseman. So Cam, Cam Salazar, Salazar reached three times, didn't get a base hit. Walked twice, hit by a pitch, scored once, struck out once. The young man from Wawasee. In for a strike. Salazar, a junior, wraps this one on the ground. High hop, first baseman, good job, and Sitterly in reacting to it. And there's two down. Ball may have caught the lip of the grass there. Took a big hop on Sitterly, but got the glove up quick enough to recover it before the home put out. There are some trampoline spots in this infield. Here's Josh Lamb. Lamb in the previous game scored three times. Singled once, walked twice. Lamb, the DH. Young man from the region. He is from about as far north and west as you can be in Indiana without being in Chicago. From Hammond, 
at the Hammond Morton High School. A little liner, first baseman, couldn't knock it down. It'll be a base hit. Been a tough play for Siddeley to stay in front of that one. Yeah, that one kind of was a floater in between what Siddeley was going to do. He was either going to go down or just get full extension, but he decided to go to the ground and just got past him. So a soft base hit for number seven. Here's Davenport. Davenport was one for three. With a double and a sacrifice fly and a pair of RBI. Numbers 40 and 41 on the season. Sprays that one foul. Reference in game number one, if you weren't with us. Young man from Molder High School in Cincinnati. High and in tight, one and one. Tied in knots on that one. One and two. Sprays this one foul. Interesting note that both teams in the second game of the letter, throwing a pitcher that has a little bit better ERA than the ones we saw in game number one. It's early in this one, but interesting to see the aesthetic change with having Deisler behind the mound instead of Greenslade in game one. Greenslade, big kid. And Deisler a little bit lower to the ground. A lot of pass balls in that first game. Davenport off the end of the bat. Center fielder against reading the swing. Took a minute to kind of adjust and come in. He sees it now, makes the catch. And we are scoreless after one inning. It's game two of a double dip. You're watching Crossroads League Baseball for Marion. Right here on the ISC Sports Network. Does your school offer high quality education? Does it offer virtual or hybrid options? Marion University Preparatory School educates students in a safe, faith-based environment focused on college and career exploration. Here at Marion University Preparatory School, we empower parents and help students to master what they love and learn as they live. We are now enrolling students in grades six through nine this fall. Full financial aid packages are still available. Act now to make MU Prep your school for 2022. Welcome back on what has turned into, frankly, a warm spring day. Temperatures approaching 80, if not past it at this point. Don't worry, that'll change in a couple of days. Greg Rakestraw, John Natale with you here on the ISC Sports Network. Before Hogue starts his second inning of work, let's thank our friends at AAA Roofing. When it rains, it pours. That was the case last week. So trust the pros at AAA Roofing. That's who we call. Special thanks, AAA Roofing for their support of Marion Athletics. So Siddeley, the first baseman, due up here. Leading off of the Bethel Pilots in the second, 24, first baseman Jacob Siddeley. So Siddeley in the last game batted sixth. Went one for three with a single up the middle. And watches that one go by. Young man from Lockport, Illinois, again, southwest suburbs of Chicago. John, do you feel the same way about professional wrestling you do about eclipses? <laughs> Doesn't do much for you. Let's just not get into that conversation. Apparently, the answer to that is There's yes. an entertainment value to it, which I understand. To eclipses or wrestling? To. <laughs> I guess they're one in the same. Sitterly Good night. Ends that conversation. Fair territory home run 
Absolutely a blast for Sitterly. And for the first time today, Bethel is in the lead as Sitterly goes big fly. One nothing for Bethel. No doubt about that one. Sitterly just sat on a fastball and just wrapped it around that foul pole out and left, but hit it a long way. Puts the Pilots up one nothing. Now batting for Bethel. And Bethel had one extra base hit in the previous game. And I will leave you hanging on that conversation until he comes back up again next time through. Not something the Pilots do a lot is hit the long ball, but Sitterly's fourth on the season. And to your point, John, as a team, that's home run number 12 on the year. But frankly, and you touched on it in the first inning, Hogue's going to be a fastball pitcher and an elevated fastball pitcher. And there's some times where you're going to get beat doing that. Just misses a little low on that one, two and one to count. So here's Dolan, the right fielder. Dolan in game number one. One for two, was hit by a pitch and had a single. Three and one. For Hogue, that is the fourth home run he has allowed this year. Marion as a staff, their 18th. Ground ball. Shortstop, third baseman instead. And he step made his father proud on that. We had a chance to catch up with Chris in between games. We apparently both share a passion for baseball and Chick-fil-A. And he was the all smiles about his son shot. having three triple or three doubles in game number one. Had a great game, kind of in between who was going to take that play with the Huntley or Estep. Estep stepped in front, fired over the first. Here's Deisler. Looking for any sort of contact to improve his at-bats from game number one. Recorded a hat trick. And again, that's been that kind of a day where that ball nearly hits him on the hands, but it got the bat instead. We'll have a little ball and a strike. Two and one. So Deisler dropped in the lineup from the previous game. Did the young man from Fort Wayne and Snyder High School. Swing and a miss. The count goes to two and two. Deisler's high school alma mater, the 5A football state champs in the fall. And they'll play in 6A next year in the largest classification in Indiana high school football. Just below the knees. Hogue has located the top of the strike zone, not yet exactly where the bottom of it is. He's kind of got that quarter arm snap throw delivery. He throws a lot with his forearm. Doesn't really come over the top. And misses ball four. So one out walk. Second base runner of the inning, but first time that Hogue left to pitch from the stretch in today's game. Courtesy runner will come in here Courtesy runner for with Bethel. Deisler being the catcher Andrew in today's Dillon. game. The so Dylan will be the nine, courtesy Dillon. runner. So here's Coleman, left fielder from Lawrence Central. I'm sure he's got some friends and family here to watch today's action. And we're going to have a little meeting of the minds at the mound. Hogue kind of has his own self-induced timeout by <laughs> relacing the, the spikes. This gives everybody a chance to kind of come down and offer some words of encouragement to the freshman pitcher. Right now, a lot he's missing a lot up top, throwing a lot of high balls, and usually what that is, just not coming down on him, throwing more than pitching. you got a pretty bright future ahead of when you are a true freshman and you're the team's number two starter. 
you got a lot of raw materials to work with there. And saw that in game one with uh, Nowacki coming in for Bethel. Did give up a few runs, but came and did a formidable job, just a freshman in that right. So Coach Zartman has a good one in him. But you're right, Greg. Being the number two, being a freshman, it's a long career ahead of you and a good one here for the Knights. Coleman swings through that one and misses. Last time out for Hogue, he threw three and two-thirds against St. Francis. That was last Sunday. Runner goes. Coleman swings. Throw down. Safe. Stolen base. Now they're going to call interference, Catch on, interference on Coleman. Yep, Coleman, Coleman's follow-through got into the path of Stefan. And so... Coleman is out, and back to first base goes Deisler, or goes Dillon, the pinch runner for in Deisler's spot. It's a land crone at the plate. Yeah, Coleman on that swing kind of stepped into pathway. Yep. Yep, stepped right in, yep, and home plate called it immediately. Great job by our camera crew to show you that for our first base camera. Runner goes, and this time we'll have to go back of his own accord. One thing's for certain, Bethel's given us a little bit of everything today in the game of baseball. And on that one, no need to ask. One and two the count. Hogue's best outing at Marion. His first through six no-hit innings against IU Columbus on the season's opening day. Runner goes. Strike three. Doesn't matter. And he would have been tagged out regardless. But the inning had already ended. So a backwards K for Landcrone. However, Sitterly does the damage. He goes big fly. Puts the pilots up one nothing. As you're watching Marion baseball on ISC. Barnes, Estep, and Stefan, five, six, and seven. Coming up this time through for the Marion Knights. Greg Rakestraw, John Natale with you. Let's thank our ISC Sports Network crew. Vince Morales, Charlie Hammock, David Kahn, Eldon Wheeler, Chase Eisnagel. He said he was properly prepared with sunscreen for today's camera position. Elijah Mash and Matt Armstrong. Thank you, gentlemen, for your hard work on this Monday. And this game was originally slated to be a Friday doubleheader, but Three days of post-eclipse rain. Push this back to a Monday tilt. Marion has just two more home dates left, and it's against the top club in the league when Taylor is here on both Thursday and Saturday. Marion finishes with Taylor and then at Huntington. That's teams one and three in the league. Bethel has teams seven and eight. They have Spring Arbor in grace over the last two weekends of the season. At Spring Arbor this weekend, and then home to grace next Friday and Saturday. Here's Barnes. Marion chasing Huntington to get one of those seeds where they don't have to do a play-in. And Huntington right now playing Grace College. We're going to score a bet on for you in a couple of moments. So Barnes, the right fielder. Mikeowitz on for his second inning of work, and that's in for a strike. Barnes scored twice. He reached base all four plate appearances. Single, walk. Had a run batted in as well.
big play in that first game, Greg, was Barnes on that rocket throw from right field to third on the cutoff. Fouled that one straight back. A young man from Riverton Park High School. You ever been to the Covered Bridge Festival in Park County? I have missed that one. I apologize. We'll add it to your fall schedule. Many things to do. Strike three called. Yep, got the outside corner, and Barnes taps the bat, acknowledges great pitch. First strike out for Mikowitz, and there's one down. Yeah, that ball just had great movement, caught the outside edge. Nothing Barnes could do with that one. So East step three extra base hits in four plate appearances. Two runs scored, and he was hit by a pitch. He has yet to be recorded as an out today. Rolls over top of that one. Now, Greg, you've been referencing the WWE. If I'm not mistaken, isn't that an intro song? Very much so. That's for the vice president now, Paul Levesque, known as Triple H back in his wrestling day. Of course. This one off the end of the bat. Second baseman going back. Couldn't make the diving play. Great effort given by Gaines at second, but... Another base hit for Estep, and he is five for five in reaching base in today's doubleheader. And sometimes you just get into those rhythms, is that no matter how hard you hit it, you just find the grass. Valiant effort by Gaines, but another base hit for Estep. Well, you reference that Huntington and Grace game. Huntington leads 5-1. They started a little bit later. Started their first game this afternoon. I'm sure at three, they're gonna play the second game at six tonight. That is the other game taking place in the league today. Here's Stefan. Sprays this one foul. Stefan from the Cincinnati suburb of Hamilton, Ohio. Played at Marietta College. Perennial Division Three powerhouse. They have had many major leaguers over the years from Marietta. The pioneers of the OAC, very familiar with them. You spoke of Orleans, Indiana is kind of your neck of the woods. Mm -hmm. That side of town is mine. Member of that OAC, Baldwin Wallace College. This is Stefan's first year at Marion, fouls that one back. Kind of one and two. So Stefan, a junior. And we'll see one more. See, Mike Woods kind of has that same approach that Hogue does, kind of has that quarter arm delivery, just kind of snaps it from his shoulder. More of an arm thrower than using the body, the legs. Lines this one, Mikeowitz couldn't get it, base hit. Good piece of two-out hitting by Stefan. Right back up the box. Shooting eye single by Stefan, just sat on it. Raise it right over the glove of Mikeowitz. So Stefan will head to the dugout to get ready for the next inning as Nathan Panarski will run in his position. Panarski had a stolen base and a run scored and such a role in the previous game. And here's Johnny Rader. Rader, a single and hit by a pitch, had a stolen base as well, did not score a run of the 11 for Marion the previous game, of the 12 for Marion the previous game. And the count of 0-1. What you see with the two runners on is a point you made in game one, Greg, is that the bottom of the order will get on, allowing those top guys at the top of the order to generate those RBI, which they have. Just another great luxury for Coach Bacon. Mary 
Crane going for the four-game series sweep. Beautiful pitch there. They count it 0 and 2. Raider fouls that one back, and as Mikowitz was reading for that pitch, I saw myself glancing at second base where the second baseman is, is holding E step at second. If Raider can get one out or half, he's got a lot of room on the right side to try to drive one through the infield. Just missed. Raider lives to see another one. That was close. And to your point, Greg, with the way that the grass has slowed the ball down, even a slow chopper onto that right side is going to be trouble for that right side of the Pilots' defense. See the room with which Raider has to operate here. Lifts this one. Runner will tag from second and East step. Right fielder has it lined up. East step will bluff and stop right there. Two down. So Mason do up next. Now batting for Marion, number four, center fielder, Caden Mason. And Marion looking for the four game sweep here in the series. Only time they have done that so far in league play. Came against Spring Arbor back in mid March. Mailson rolls over that one foul. Mason, the number nine batter. One for four in the previous game with a single and a run scored. Just missed outside. Mason has played 44 and 45 games each of the last two years. On track for a similar number this time around, if not more. Belts this one. Center fielder drifting back, drifting back. That one will get down. That one will score two runs. Mason thinking three. He'll stop at second to be safe. He'll settle for a two out, two RBI double. And Marion jumps in front two to one. And the bottom of the order just continues to produce for the Knights. Mason found one, just found the gap, just outlasted. Tolson couldn't get to it to the wall, scores too easily. And that puts Marion ahead two to one. So four hits, the first trip through the lineup for the Knights. Now Huntley. So Huntley, a fly ball to right, his previous plate appearance. And for a strike. You had a chance to visit Ryland's hometown at the end of December. This is where John furiously checks his notes as to where's Ryland's hometown. This one down the left field line. Coleman went after it in a flat fashion and said that thing took off. Huntley's going to have a double, back-to-back -back doubles in Marion. In front by two. Huntley's been waiting all afternoon just to get one. Came into this one leading the team in average. Just couldn't get it going, but that was a great shot down the left field line. Coleman was helpless against us, had to track it down. Huntley easily in the second, third run for the Knights. That's four base hits in the last five batters to the plate. And there'll be a conversation coming up here for Mikowitz. No activity yet in the Bethel bullpen. 
This portion of Marion Baseball, presented in part by our friends at Pepsi. Grab a Pepsi and some friends and get in the game. Pepsi, proud partner of the Marion University Knights. Well, Huntley rudely interrupted my story by hitting one off the base of the wall in left field. Ryland is from Newcastle, of which John had a chance to be on the call of the Henry Community Health Hall of Fame Classic on the girls' side back on December the 29th. And, Greg, I do have to say, with some of the stories, working with ISC, doing some of the games I've done, Newcastle, Southport, being able to share pictures and tell stories of these field houses and these gyms in Indiana versus back home in Cleveland where we do own basketball hoops and we do play the game, but not as prestigious as it is here. And what an amazing facade. I stepped foot into that place. I was mesmerized. Salazar, ground ball to the first baseman his last time up. Salazar himself, pretty good high school basketball player of his own accord at Wabasee. Just missed. This young man has been busy. Salazar came in on the day batting 371. Found his way on three times in that first game without getting a base hit. <laughs> Lifts this one, holding up for the center fielder, who will make the play, and the inning is over, but Marion Plates three on two singles and two doubles. They lead a 3-1 through two. You're watching Crossroads League Baseball on the ISC Sports Network. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Greg Rakestraw, John Natale with you here on the ISC Sports Network. Bethel fans taking this one in. They love the day in terms of the weather, not so much the results so far. With Marion winning game one 12 to one and leading game two three to one. Nine one two coming up this time through for Bethel. Oh, give up a solo blast to Sitterly to begin the top of the second, but now finds himself staked to a three one lead. That bottom of the order, just like in game one, coming through and again for the Knights. Either putting people on or placing runners, doing a little bit of everything from that five hole down. So this is Elijah Gaines. Leading off of the Bethel Pilots in the top of the third inning. Gaines, Number the three, second baseman. Elijah Gaines. A young man from Orleans, Indiana. First pitch swinging and sprays that one foul. Gaines scored the lone run of the previous game for Bethel. Finished the game one for three. Gaines in his first year at Bethel as a freshman. Ground ball. He stepped, cuts it off, but Davenport couldn't pick that one. That's going to be a base hit. Heck of an effort by Estep just to get a glove on it, but Gaines hustling down the line. And the play, you know, with Huntley coming up on it, Estep had to go down on his knees to fire that across. Had to be a perfect throw, but maybe Huntley has a better opportunity just to field that up and throw it right on the run. 
but instead it's a base runner for the Pilots. So leadoff man is aboard for a second inning in a row, though the leadoff man scored on a solo blast last time up. So here's Tolson. Tolson, a ground ball to second his previous plate appearance. Tolson came in the day batting 290 on the season. Sprays this one. That'll drop into left field for a base hit. Perfectly placed flare and back-to-back -back base hits means the tying runs are aboard for Bethel with nobody out here in the top of the third. Stepping into the box for Bethel, 27, Jesse Stout. Here's Stout, fly ball to right his last time up. Stout batting 284. Shows bunt, pops it up, and nothing Stefan can do about it. Stout 13 runs batted in entering the day. Marion plays again on Thursday. And they host Taylor. Corners up on the infield and middle up double play depth. Hogue flinched. Hence the balk. So a free 90 feet. And Hogue getting the explanation right now as to what happened. First one of those we've seen today. Infield in. Obviously no bunt coming from Stout now. His job is to drive home a run or two. Job by Stefan to block that with no further advance. With first base open. Don't want to give him too much to hit. Popped up. Should reach the seats. First baseman gives chase, but that hit tree first. Then very gently hit a cook. One and two. A little high. Two and two. Ground ball, and that'll get through for a base hit. And that will score two runs. So a perfectly placed ground ball. And if you play the infielders back, you give up one there, not two, but you understand the math behind it. We're all tied up at three in the top of the third. Yeah, Huntley and Salazar playing in with the guys on second and third. That ball just found a gap right past Huntley in the center field, scores two. Let's give Stout a pair of RBI. He's got three hits over the course of the doubleheader. Here's Greenslade. Brown ball, foul ball, foul ball. Just turned left the bag, and activity is about to begin in the bullpen for Marion. That's Garrett West, freshman from Ben Davis, going to start to loosen.
Ground ball. Shortstop makes the diving play and does get it to Salazar in time to hit the lead runner. That looked like that was going to be a base hit the entire way. So six to four for out number one. Fielder's choice for Green Slade, one down. Advantage infield grass on that one. That ball looked like it had a clear shot to go into center, but Huntley with a great play to able to flip it to Salazar. Get the lead out. Here's Sitterly. He deposited one behind the left field wall his last time up. Okay, strike on that one. And for Sitterly, that was his fourth home run of the season. Tying Landcrone for the team high. Count it one and one. And smash this one into center field for a base hit. Mason up with it quickly. Green slade to second. Bethel barreling some up here in game number two. Sitterly has got Hogue down. Just wrapped that ball right in the center field. Batting for Bethel, 25, Thomas Dolan. So fifth hit of the inning. Now for the Pilots. Here's Dolan. Ground ball to E-step his last time up. Ball missed outside. Kind of 2 and 0. Oh. Stefan could be taking that walk to the mound for two purposes. Just, I think he wanted that one too on the outside corner. Didn't get the call. But Hogan, some trouble here in the third. Lampard's turn and confirming second mound visit. One for pitching coach, one for catcher. All one wraps that one foul. Stefan able to block that one. But Hogue laboring here now in the top of the third. As four of the first five batters have reached. Dolan in a real good position here. Outfield straight away, but lots of outfield, lots of open grass. Ball four. So bases are loaded now. And that's going to be that. Coach Bacon making his way to the mound on this one. We'll have a pitching change coming from Marion. So with that, we'll step aside for 30 seconds. Tell you more about Garrett West when we come back to Marion. This game is tied at three in the third as you're watching on the ISC Sports Network. sugar. This is the Pepsi with zero compromises. This is Pepsi Zero Sugar. So Garrett West is now the pitcher. A freshman from Ben Davis High School. So from one freshman to another. 
West on the season, making his ninth appearance all as a reliever. His ERA, 9.9. .9. He's thrown 16 and a third innings on the season. He's walked 11, he struck out 11. Opposing batters hitting 358 against the freshman on the campaign. Very similar situation when Nowacki came in the first game. Freshman reliever came into some trouble. Now it's just reversal of roles as West has himself bases loaded jam here. So West will come in and face Dominic Deisler. Deisler, the catcher in this game, who walked. Greenslade is at third, Sitterly is at second, Dolan is at first. Outfield straight away here, ready for the next batter up. Deisler will be the seventh batter to the plate. Again, only Green Slade hitting into a fielder's choice of all that looked like it was going to be a single. Only player retired, so to speak, in terms of an out created. That was Stout at second base. Batting now for the Pilots, number two, Dominic Deisler. Deisler reaches out lines. This one will go down for a base hit. One run will score. They will hold the runner at third. And Bethel back in front as they put a three spot of their own on the board at the top of the third inning, and they're still going. First pitch he saw, Deisler just swings it, puts the bat head out, and drops it in the left field. Get him on, get him in, get him over. Here's Coleman. And Coleman rung up because of the interference call last time. Still apparently a little jawing going on about that as Coleman steps to the plate. Whoa! That one blocked. Guarantee you West and Coleman know each other well because they went to conference rival high schools. West from Ben Davis, Coleman at Lawrence Central. Coleman, the eighth batter of the plate this inning. And West is trying to throw it through him right now, 2-0 oh the count. And again, he has nowhere to put him. West has got to find home plate. Coleman will be watching this one go down all the way. Put the bat on his shoulders. See if he can get West in the zone. Finds it there, right at the knees. Coleman came in batting 321. Ball four. He gets an RBI without having to lift the bat off of his shoulder. And make it 5-3 for the Pilots. So the Pilots now will bat around here in the top of the third. It looks like activity will begin immediately in the Marion pen. The batter, number four, Jordan Lankron. Chase Stoops will be the next player to start to loosen. Here's Landcrone. Struck out looking to end the threat in the second. 
A little high, and now West will get a conversation from Max Steffen. And not many wins on the season, but this is how Bethel gets them. They kind of nickel and dime you. Just keep runners on the pads. Then the long ball by Sitterly was kind of the aberration, but this is how Bethel plays baseball. They're 9-28. Four conference wins coming in. See if Landcrone gets a green light hit or is asked to wait. Even though it's 2-0, and oh, given West issues in terms of finding home plate. Watching all the way, that's in for a strike. Finds the opposite corner at the knees. Good back-to-back -back pitches by West there. Good fastballs. Big over the top sweeping curveball misses hot. And the count goes to three and two. But brings it back in the zone where Land Crone swings and misses his second strike out of the day. And there's two down. That is a big out. Now batting number three, Eliza Gaines. So here's Gaines. He began this inning with a single. That was the ball that Eastep made a great diving effort to stop, but couldn't get a throw to first base in time to beat the hustling Gaines down the line. That one nearly hit the bull, 1-0. Marks the second trip to the Bethel lineup already. Here in the top of the third. The lifted foul, we'll do it again, 1-1. One one. Tolson awaits on deck if it gets to him for the Pilots. Count at one and two. Good spot here for West. Minimize the damage if he can get out of this one. Two and two. And bases remain loaded here, so not much wiggle room for West to work with. Ground ball, that'll get through for a base hit. Well, maybe not. Second baseman will slow it down. That'll at least hold the runner up at third in the pinch runner, but infield single allows Dolan to score, and it's 6-3 Bethel. Just kind of sucked the bat head out. That ball had a slow kind of die towards Salazar. Couldn't do anything with it. I don't know if he was going to get gains even if he did field that properly, but another run scores. And the importance for Salazar is that he got to it. That prevented it from being a two-run scoring single. But the 11th batter of the plate this inning, It'll be Tolson. Tolson singled as well his previous time up. Trying to join Gaines is having a two-hit inning. Gaines has been as productive as any Bethel player has been today. He scored twice and has three base hits. In for a strike. An absolutely perfect Monday afternoon. Cue shot off the end of the bat. Hard to think that.
Both these teams have two weekend series left to go. But the season has flown by that quickly. Be playoff baseball before you know it. At this level, you get about a uh, about a two and a two thirds month window to play your regular season games. Lifted, but foul. Conference tournament starts May first. That's slated to go through May seventh, and then the regional round begins the very next week. Sales high, two and two the count. Runner at third base and Dillon trying to get the attention of the pitcher, trying to get him to flinch. West unbothered. Lifted. Left fielder coming in, third baseman backing up, shortstop offering help. Their assistance is not needed. E-Step's got it inning over. Damage most certainly done. 11 come to the plate. Five come around to score. Not the leads at 6-3 on the ISC Sports Network. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith or our Franciscan values. It's not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. It's that Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. Marion, Indy's Catholic University. Marion's been playing from in front for most of this series. That is not the case in game number two. They trail the Pilots 6-3 to three here in the home half of the third. Greg Rakestraw, John Natale with you. Here on the ISC Sports Network. For the Knights, they will send three, four, and five. Although, frankly, it has not made much difference for Marion what part of the lineup has come through. They have all been successful. That's also been their MO all season long. Having seven players and they're batting nine routinely over 300. Now, with the Knights, you really can't pinpoint a specific strength on how they get all those runs. Either they're Hitting the ball really hard on the nose, or they're getting people on, get them over with just base running and some errors in the field, pitching mistakes. But Marion, 6-3, not a big hole to get out of, but they don't they haven't seen they haven't seen the bottom end of the score here much this afternoon. So here's Lamb. Lamb singled his last time up. Back in the first inning. First pitch swinging grounds this one foul. So Mikowicz stayed staged to a three-run lead. Mikowicz is eighth start of the year. Lamb lifts this one. Coleman drifting back should make the play and does one down. Sun kind of shifting a little bit. And Tiazzi Coleman's had the shades down, but an easy put out for out number one. Here's Davenport. Fly ball to center. His last time up. Watches that go by. Outside corner strike, one and one the count. And one other Crossroads League game taking place as we speak. Huntington leads Grace 6-3, top of the eighth. Davenport went fishing, couldn't catch up to it, one and two the count. Davenport, two RBI in the previous game. And smashes this one, it'll get down for a base hit. Tell you what, there are a few things in sports that are as beautiful as a left-handed swing when it makes contact. Davenport displayed that right there. Yeah, just put a sting on it. 
right in the center field. Good swing, right through it, right up the gut. Good piece of hitting from Davenport. And I say that as a person that was a right-handed hitter in baseball. Those lefty swings are just gorgeous. We had mentioned Chris Sabo in the office, one of your favorite players, a really a former Mariner, but former Red. Had one of the prettiest swings in all of baseball, and I'm sure you know who I'm referring to. Backup catcher, Dave Wilson, right? Exactly. Former Red. Right Mariner. on the head. Yep, absolutely. He wasn't a backup. He was a starting catcher. But yeah, the guy went to the same high school as that guy in terms of Bryce Davenport from Moeller High School in Cincinnati. Here's Barnes. Barnes lifts it off the end of the bat. That's got some carry to it, but right fielder's got it. And there's two down. So Barnes retired for a second time in as many at bats. Now here's Estep. And he has been the primary generator of offense today. Singleton scored last time up. Did Dawson. Davenport solidly at first base. And he step first pitch swing it. You know, we've talked a, a decent amount about the kind of the chances that Marion taking the base pass, but frankly, those guys that have been the stolen base guys haven't been much on the base pass today. They've not been in that situation. They'll throw behind and got him. Was too far off the bag. Tag applied and Marion is out of the inning with Estep heading back to the dugout. Take a look there. Tag applied. Siderly got him. 6-3. Nice trail after three on ISC. Welcome to The Deal, a podcast dedicated to maximizing name, image, and likeness opportunities. You'll hear from student athletes, coaches, and athletic administrators on how NIL partnerships can impact individuals and the schools they attend. It all comes down to making the best deal. Take one more look, and we'll slow it down frame by frame for you. An absolutely perfect snap throw, and he got him. Absolutely right call. First base umpire on top of that. So Davenport got nabbed over at first base. Zero goes to the board for the Knights, and they trail Bethel as West is on for what he hopes is his first full inning of work. And Jay Stoops warms in the bullpen if needed for the Knights. This fourth inning presented by our friends at BSN. They are the preferred provider apparel for Marion University Athletics. Wes has got to come out here and try to slow down Bethel. A quick one, two, three in the first, but they've had some, a few at-bats in each inning in the second and the third. See if they can't get something quick. So Stout, singled last time up, picked up an RBI. Picked up two of them, in fact. And Greenslade and Sitterly, the trio do up two, three, and four. As these teams see each other, likely for a final time this year. In for a strike. And Bethel, four and 23 in league play. Nine and 28 on the season. Looking for just their third road win of the year. Count at one and one. West airmails that one. Two and one the count. Just out a fly ball to right his first time up. And Stefan rocks over on that's the second time he's taken one over the course of the two games today. Right off the top of the knee. Got 
There'll be an ice bath that'll have his name on it after today's game. He has gotten beaten up back there today. And it's, it, you know, if we have this day and we, we sit here saying how perfect it is. You know, from a catching standpoint, hey, you've had a couple of games now in the 70s and 80s when you're not used to it in the middle of the day. Maybe looking forward to maybe cooler conditions coming up on Thursday. Well, just the velocity change. I mean, that pitch is coming in hard anyway, but when it comes off the bat, it's leaving even quicker. You're right. I got him right in the side of the kneecap. This one hammered by Stout, center fielder. Again, the toughest play. You'll, you'll hear, I say the toughest play is ball hit right at you. I would disagree as an outfielder, not that I ever played much outfield. I was always a first baseman. Bethel, but you are reading the swing. And so when that ball gets off the end of the bat, it, it, it can fool you. Mason recovered in time, one down. Especially on a line drive like that, usually in the air, high pop. You can find yourself, kind of find the, the trajectory of that ball, but you're right, when it comes off the bat like that, not sure where to take it a couple steps back forward, but Mason was there perfectly. Here's Green Sled. Strikeout victim was Green Slade back in the first. This is his first at bat, and that's perhaps the best offering West has given so far. Right under the hands. Uh huh. Rolls over top of this one. Now, like Green Slade, when you are a native of South Africa, you probably played some different sports growing up other than baseball, not the Cricket. traditional. Did not. This pitch just missed. That was a good pitch. Full count. But Corbin played water polo, field hockey, and rugby growing up in addition to playing baseball. Yeah. Smokes this one. E-step picks it. Now does he have time? Oh, he does. E-step has been equally good on the field as he's been at bat, and he's got four hits today. There's two down. That is a great stick in the glove. That ball really ate up East Step, was able to collect it and just fire over to first. Green Slay with not a lot of speed, but a great play nonetheless, two down. And to Chris and Sue, DVDs are available of today's broadcast when you log on to iscsportsnetwork.com. So here's Sitterly. Sitterly has reached twice, scored twice. And scored of his own accord in that solo blast back in the second. And lashes this one to right, but hits it directly at the right fielder. And for the first time since the first, the pilots are retired in order. To the bottom of the fourth we go. 6-3 pilots in front on the ISC Sports Network. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense, and investing in you makes good sense to us. Look inside the Marion dugout. We're sitting on 21 wins this season. Looking to add one more to make it 17 wins in league play. Again, by way of the win earlier, they know that they are going to be in the Crossroads League tournament, but still a lot to play for. Again, they're trying to ensure a top four seed. Right now, they are number five. Teams they are chasing in terms of the baseball standings. Taylor at 22 and six. That's who Marion will see Thursday and Saturday. Indiana Wesleyan, who already swept Marion earlier this year. Huntington, whom Marion plays next weekend at 17 and nine. And then St. Francis, if Marion wins today, they would tie St. Francis with eight games left to play. Here's East Step. Within a tie, St. Francis would hold that tiebreaker. Took three or four from Marion earlier. 
an E step. Has to shuffle his way out of that pitch. Mikowicz struggled in the second, but here in the fourth, pitching solidly and no activity right now in the Bethel bullpen. Count it one and one now. Pop up, but that might reach the van. I'm told the van is just fine. Vince Morella has in that van had itself an adventure on Saturday morning. Text chain running through the ISC Sports Network staff directory. The van producing today's game had a flat tire and was not on the Marion campus when it did. Thankfully, our friends at Stewart Tire were Johnny on the spot. Had Vince here in plenty of time for the double dip with Goshen. He stepped ground ball and literally has to play it. Now, foot race to get there and wins it by a step. Well done by the first baseman, one down. And he step will head back to the dugout for the first time today. He had reached his previous five plate appearances. He's had a good day, and that ball just took a little bit of a wicked hop on Sutterly right at the last moment, but stayed with it and able to beat East Step to the bag. To Stefan, who is a walking bruise given how he is been pelted behind home plate today. Singled last time up, and that just tailed foul. Count it one and one. Big hole right up the middle. That Stout and Lankrone shaded to the left. Inside out swing that's heading to the bullpen. One and two. Easier said than done, but if you're Stefan, just sit back a little bit and drive that ball right up the middle. Stay alive swing that time by Stefan. Missed. Two and two. Bethel is off until Friday. They'll play Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday the next two weekends. Fair territory. Landcrone backs up and then shows a cannon over at third base, and there's two down. Drifting to that side, and I guess I read the scouting report right. And Crone just able to sit back on it. Stefan, a slow roller, and he fires a BB to first for the second out. Here's Raider, fly ball to right, his previous plate appearance. Marion in danger, putting a zero on the board for a third time in four innings. This game began about an hour and 20 minutes ago. Turns on this one, but the park should hold it. It will. Center fielder's got it. And that's the end of the inning. Marion retired in order for the first time in game at number two. Bethel maintains a 6-3 lead through four on ISC. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith or our Franciscan values. It's not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. It's that Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. Marion, Indy's Catholic University. 
Third pitcher of this game, too, for Marion, Jace Stoops. We'll get the ball here to start the top of the fifth inning. This team trailing by a score of 6-3. to three. Stoops is a redshirt junior from Twin Lakes High School in Monticello. Stoops in the season, an ERA just shy of 13. He's 1-1. One one. This is his ninth appearance. All but one have been out of the pen. He has thrown eight and a third innings on the season. He's given up 12 runs. He has walked seven. He has struck out 10 opposing batters, hitting 368 off of Stoops this year. So Marion going for just their second conference se series sweep of the season. Bethel, again, is trying to stay within striking range of that number eight seed with most teams having eight conference games left to play. Stoops last year pitched in nine games. Played in six games in 2022. Redshirted his freshman year in 2021, appearing twice. Came to Marion as a catcher. Was converted to pitching two years ago. First pitch swinging, that's Dolan. Dolan walked and scored last time up. Part of that five-run, 11-batter inning in the third. Stoops slings that one in for a strike and finds himself ahead 0-2. Just pulled the string on that one a little much. Dolan, E-step, routine, one down. Good start for Stoops. Gets a slow roller over to East step, puts him out for the first out. By the way, West goes an inning and two thirds. And he does not get credit for any of the runs that were scored by Bethel. That all went to the starter in Hogue. West ended up retiring the last four batters he faced. Here's Deisler. Got his first base knock of the day and drove in a run in his previous plate appearance. Bell tie fastball in for a strike. And this is exactly what you want to do, being Jay Stoops is coming and throw strikes. Ball hopped to home plate. Now I saw you react when I mentioned that Jay Stoops pitched at Twin Lakes High School. Their mascot would be. The Indians. Well done. A little high, two and two the count. Learned a lot from you, Mr. Eggstraw. I'm not sure that's a good thing, frankly. <laughs> and the count runs full now. Coleman awaits on deck. And ball four. So after having three strikeouts in the previous game, Deisler now has reached on all three of his plate appearances today. And in one more time, he'll make it to first base and head back to the dugout. So that's Dillon, who has been his personal runner in this game, will take back to the base pass. Coleman walked and had an RBI in his last plate appearance. Got fooled on that one. That front foot was kind of stepping out on that one and in for a strike 0 and 1. Strike two. Stoops, a little something extra on that one. That one diving away from Coleman, and that was a quick 
plate appearance for the Lawrence Central Bear. Two down. And a quick turn of events, a quick walk to Dysler, and then comes back with three straight strikes to get Coleman. Landcrone now at the plate. He struck out both plate appearances today. Want to know the count, able to stop the swing in time. Two and out. Oh. Both bullpens have gone silent here in the top of the fifth. It's in for a strike. Count of two and one. And tomorrow on the ISC Sports Network, we're right back here on campus. Marion Women's Lacrosse. Sky high pop up. First baseman drifts over. Davenport gets it, and the inning is over. We'll keep telling that lacrosse story when we come back. Davenport using that ample territory on the first baseline to track it down. Knights trail by three on ISC. This is the Pepsi for America's best barbecue, worthy of 100 mile detours and 1,000 likes. Looks good. This is the Pepsi for mopping, dipping, and dousing. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. This is the Pepsi for serious fans and serious eats. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? Best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. Today's game on the ISC Sports Network, presented in part by Indiana Members Credit Union. Proud to support Marion University and now offers a free Marion University Knights debit card. The card is included when you open a free IMCU checking account. Get your Marion University Knights debit card today and show your support. Visit any IMCU branch or sign up online now at IMCU.com. 9-1-2 coming up this time through for the Knights. Mikowitz on for his fifth inning of work. Kind of roughed up in the second. Other than that, he has been pretty solid. Settled down seven straight, and he is put down for the Knights. But Caden Mason, two RBI with that double in the second. See if he can get something started. He is in line for his second win of the season. It's a lot of work to do. Nine outs to go here for Marion. This is going to be a seven-inning game. Line right field. Foul. Just turned foul. By the way, first game has gone final between Grace and Huntington. Huntington wins that one six to three. Mason slaps this one to left field for a base hit. So leadoff man is aboard. And that is the first time that has been the case in this game two for Marion. Good in and out swing, just timed perfectly, got it through the gap between short and third. Mason League sings off for the Knights. Here's Huntley. Huntley doubled his last time up. Scoring Mason after Mason had doubled to bring in the two previous runs. This one, and the grass slows it down. Second baseman then has time and makes the play. The way that, that ball skipped off the infield, that kind of brought it back to games because it kind of looked like it was going towards that hole and then a little skip made it shoot to the left. If the foul territory is reminiscent of Oakland, the infield is Wrigley Field late 80s. It's thick. 
Here's Salazar. A man in scoring position, but one down. Salazar swings and misses. Salazar 0 for 2 in this game. Lines this when it should get down, and it will. Mason held just to be sure. And again, down three. He'll hold, and throw misses the cutoff, which allows Salazar to make the heads-up play to scamper into second. Good headsy base running by Salazar on that one. Drove one right into the center field. You're right, Greg. Mason had to hold up a little bit, see if it was going to drop or not. Able to scamper into third easily, but Salazar in a good heads-up base run. He gets a second now. Runners in scoring position, only one out. And when you're down three, you have to wait. You have to make sure that gets down, and it did. Especially knowing the middle of the lineup is coming through here. So Lamb, one for two. Flew out to left field last time up and singled the time before that. Infield in here. And I'm not sure I'd be doing that up three. I think I might be in the, hey, we'll give you one. We're going to get the out here. But that's just me. Count it 2-0. and oh. Still nothing brewing yet in the Bethel dugout. Sky high pop up now. Coleman is coming in, drifting in, drifting in, and there's no way you're going to advance runner from there. So a key out for Bethel, and there's now two down. Huge out for Mikeowitz there. Just a lazy fly ball from Lamb, and Coleman coming in full speed. He caught that ball about 10 feet from the dirt, and there was no way that Mason was even going to come close to tagging on that one. Here's Davenport, singled last time up. He does that again, it scores two runs. High hopper, first baseman's got it, that should end the inning. Marion will strand two and Bethel will maintain a three run lead going to the top of the sixth. You're watching Marion Baseball on ISC. Marion University is like a home to me. Campus is where I made friends that I know will last a lifetime. Academics, sports, or arts, Marion's got something for you. Plus, downtown Indy is just 10 minutes away from campus. I'm a huge sports fan. Living in Indy, I've got the Knights, the Colts, and the Pacers. Applying was so fast and easy. I went to Marion for the education, but what I took away was the experience. Marion University offers an exceptional education and an unforgettable experience. Apply today for full scholarship consideration at marion.edu. Take this chance to thank our tremendous ISC Sports Network crew. That's not them, by the way. Vince Morales, Charlie Hammock, David Kahn, Eldon Wheeler, Chase Eisnagel, Elijah Mash, and Matt Armstrong. Thank you, fellas, for your hard work on this Monday afternoon. Alongside John Natale, my name is Greg Rakestraw. Stoops on for his second inning of work. Marion's got six outs to make up a three-run deficit. They've already won the series. They took both games on Saturday and won the earlier game in run rule fashion. Credit to Bethel. They have got the bats going in this one. They had a five-run outburst in the top of the third, and they have put zeros on the board for Marion in the three innings since. Gaines, then Tolson and Stout. Nine, one, and two. Gaines has been busy today. Two hits alone in the third. Hit the ball hard in the first game as well. Number three, Elijah Gaines. Gaines chased one at his shoulder blades. 0 on 1 the count. Yeah. 
And he stepped. That ball trampolined on him. That's tough. Leadoff man is aboard for Bethel. Now, if you're Bethel, you're in the insurance run business. And again, I don't think there's anything Dawson can do on that one. If there's one place where that ball wasn't supposed to hit, it did, because that caught the lip of the grass and just Number took a nasty four, hop. Colson. And he stepped, had no chance. Here's Tolson again. Yep. Tolson puts it down perfectly. Stoop should have a play at first. He does. Outstanding sacrifice bunt by Tolson. Runner in scoring position, one down. And again, Stout has been as locked in as any batter for Bethel today. So it's textbook baseball that the pilots just played there. I hope there is this level of breeze this evening. Leave the windows open. It'll be a perfect night to do that. This is Chamber of Commerce weather today. This one is sprayed foul. I was wondering after game one, because the weather was so perfect, if it could possibly get better. And I have been told that because it is absolutely gorgeous here. This is our version of San Diego today here in Indianapolis. Count it one and one. It's in for a strike. And two more home dates, Thursday and Saturday for Marion. Conference tournaments at Taylor. They're on the road next week in Huntington. Sky high. Wind is pushing this one towards Foul territory, but E-Step is there to make the play. And there's two down. In a lot of parks, that's simply a foul ball, not here. Now batting 35, Corbin Greenslade. Here's Greenslade. Slate a ground ball to third base his last time up. Reached from the fielder's choice and scored back in that five run fifth, or third rather. Centerly awaits on deck if it gets to him. This is a big out for Stoops because siddeley has been on every pitch that he's seen in this second game. So if he can get Greensdale, his screen's laid here, you're in good shape. Chase the elevated fastball. One and two the count. Two solid inning is relieved by Stoops. He's kept his team in it. Knights have six outs to score three runs or more. Or this doubleheader will be split between these two conference rivals. Back in a moment on ISC. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Marion Athletics on the ISC Sports Network brought to us in part by Tom O'Brien Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. If saving money is important to you, visit Tom O'Brien Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, a proud sponsor of Marion Athletics. 
Phil O'Brien is in his preferred Jeep dealer, two locations, the biggest Jeep inventory in Indiana. To show our support, Tom O'Brien donates $200 to Marion for every car any student, parent, employer, friend of Marion buys. He mentioned this promo. Go Knights, go to Tom O'Brien to see how our family works for you since 1933. So Micah Witz, who went seven innings, his last time out versus Taylor. That was last Saturday. He is now pitching into the sixth of this game. Micah Witz won his season opener against Philander Smith. That's not the pitcher, that's the university they were playing. Since that time, picked up losses to Oakland City, Goshen, Huntington, Indiana Wesleyan, and Taylor. Swings and misses on that one does Barnes, and the count is 0-1. Barnes 0 for 2, and this one struck out looking in the second. Fly ball to right field the time after that. Count of 1 and 2. Stay alive, swing by Barnes. Velocity has dropped a lot from Mike Woods. Still throwing strikes, making Marion beat him. Barnes reached all four plate appearances in game number one. Scored twice. Ground ball, Mike Woods still should have time and got him. The joy of having the ball hit right back to you. You got some time to work with. Let's take a second look here. Close. We need to be an out, one down. Third baseman, number six, Dawson, E-step. So here's E-step. Singleton scored back in the second. That's the only run in which Marion has plated runners today. Three in the bottom of the second, take a 3-1 lead. It was short-lived, and frankly, both teams have kind of gone cold offensively. No runs have been scored since the top of the third inning. He stepped reached on his first five plate appearances today. Sky-high pop-up, and again, Park should hold it, but can somebody get there in time? And it does clear the fence. Long way traversed that time by both Gaines and Dolan to no avail. Count it one and one. We're waiting for the yeah, home plate umpires doing the pitcher. Solly telling me, wait, wait till your fielders get back in their position. Now they're ready. Just off the corner. One thing Mike Witt's been able to do throughout this whole game, unlike game one, is keep the free passes off the pads. No walks. Hasn't hit a batter. It's amazing how much easier life is when that's the case. And as you say that, it's now three and one. This is already the second longest outing of the season for Michael Witt's. East Step was trying to tie that with a bases empty three-run homer. Full count. And ball four. So as mentioned, the first free pass of the game. Here's Stefan. Step in. Single and a run scored back in the second inning. Ground ball to third is last time up.
situation that the Knights really need here. Start making Mike Witz throw a lot of pitches. He's got him in the stretch. Hasn't been in this position much this game, so take advantage of it. Ground ball. He'll get the lead runner. Stefan hustling down the line. Got him there, too. Turning two is Bethel. First time we've seen the conventional 4-6-3 double play today. And we go to the top of the seventh. Marion still trails it 6-3 here on the ISC Sports Network. zero sugar this is the pepsi with zero compromises this is pepsi zero sugar look at our accommodations for the afternoon we're about three windows over at this point hello there there's us greg regstraw john natale with you here on the isc sports network as a softball field that's directly behind us then tennis courts then St. Vincent Field, which is where our cameras will be tomorrow. Joey Lynch from Harrison Silcox will have the action for you at 5 o'clock as the Marion women's lacrosse team begins their conference tournament run. They're the number three seed. They will take on the Saints of Siena Heights. Our second lacrosse telecast of the season, both featuring Siena Heights. Here for... Bethel, Sitterly, Dolan, Deisler. Well, the last time at Sitterly, not the last in the first game to play it, I was trying to work a lengthy conversation in. Bringing in wrestling, eclipses. I don't have a chance to finish the story because Sitterly hit one of the maintenance buildings down the left field. Ball line. hasn't landed yet. Well, in, in game one, we referenced the fact that Sitterly is from Lockport, Illinois. Former Indianapolis Colts, Aaron Moorhead is from Lockport, Illinois. There is another famous athlete, if not a guy that would be considered a guy playing a professional sport that happens to also be from Lockport, Illinois. Said really a line drive to right his last time up. Sprays that one foul. So in terms of like modern day wrestlers, are there many names that you would know, John? Modern day? Modern day wrestling. I don't know. Is Junkyard Dog still a modern day? Sylvester sadly died several years ago. Rest in peace, JYD. Sitterly swings and misses at that one. The count goes to 0 2. For me to feed you the answer since it's the 0 2 pitch. Isn't there a guy who's in Garden, Guardians of the Galaxy who's a wrestler? It's very good pull by you. That would be David Batista as Sitterly swings and misses. So before he gets to the dugout, to the same hometown as CM Punk. Chicago made punk, CM Punk, that's Lockport, Illinois. You learn something today. Sitterly goes down on three pitches, something? and there's one away. One or two things. I've, I've learned two years of curriculum at Marion University today. I don't think they give you official credit for you. this. I don't think so. <laughs> as always a this, might be, this might count, count, count as a class at Ancilla College, perhaps. Marion, I'm not sure. So Dolan. Watches that one go by, 2-0 oh the count. Dolan a ground ball to third base twice in this game. Walked and scored back in the third. Hogue is on the hook for the loss right now for Marion. Mikowitz may get the chance to throw the complete game win. Because again, this is a seven-inning game. Stoops being asked to eat up the final three innings of this one. Knowing that Marion plays in three days. And ball four. Second walk that Stoops has issued so far. Now is number two, Dominic Deisler. Fourth for the game in total by Marion pitching. So here's Deisler. Deisler was the other walk that Stoops had given up. This begins the last batter in terms of Dolan begins the second trip to the lineup that has seen the senior, the junior from Twin Lakes. Is that misses high? 
Kirk Stoops might be just starting to tire just a little bit. He's got that big 6'4 frame. You can see those balls being left up. He's not coming all the way down. Deisler's been on base all three times. Already a chance for his third walk, up 2-0. Two and a third does match his longest outing of the season. This one hit well, but hit at the center fielder. Mason can just casually stroll over and get that one. This is now Stoops' longest appearance of the year, and there's two away. This tops his last appearance six days ago. And he lost to Mount Vernon Nazarene. Here's Coleman. Struck out his last time up. Struck out back in the second as well. Pops this one up. That should reach the seats behind us. Looking ahead, eight, nine, and one. Do up next time through for Marion. Smacked, but to the shortstop, who then will boot it. Second error of the day against the shortstop, and both have been on balls that was going to play at second base. And handled the hop well, just He's never picked up the baseball. Started off in a glove, and as he tried to make the transfer, just lost it. Stayed on the dirt. There is always that inclination once you think you've gotten the final out to kind of switch off. Let's see if Stoops can avoid that here. Just inside to Landcrone. Fouled out of the glove of Davenport to end the fifth inning. Young man from Crown Point trying to avoid. And 0 for 4, game number two. And rare back that time by Stoops. Count it one and one. Just missed the inside corner. Number eight hitter, number five to the plate this inning. At the D, strike call, two and two. You definitely want to try to get Lancone here and not bring up one of the hottest hitters all afternoon for the Pilots and Elijah Gaines. Big out here. Good pitch, Stoops. The error does not come back to haunt the Knights. So, three outs to get three runs or more. This one belongs to Bethel. It's stretch time in Indianapolis. Back in a moment on ISC. This is the Pepsi for America's best barbecue. Worthy of 100 mile detours and 1,000 likes. Looks good. This is the Pepsi for mopping, dipping, and dousing. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. This is the Pepsi for serious fans and serious eats. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? Best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. Our seventh inning stretch brought to us by First On Site. Formerly more Restoration is here to help you power through whatever comes your way from fire and flood to catastrophic storms or biohazards. They have the team, technology, and resources to help you restore, rebuild, and rise. Go Knights. Knights pick up their 21st win of the season earlier this afternoon. 16 and 11 in league play. Trying to avoid the split. To do that, they got to score at least three. Four would win it here in this game scheduled to go seven. Eight, nine, and one. And Mikowitz again is going to get the opportunity here to go the distance to get his second win of the season. Been a 
take some extra attention from these bottom hitters of the Knights, but they've been effective all afternoon. Got to get something going, see if they can get top of that order. And Bethel is trying to snap a losing skid. The date's back to March 28th. Good start by Mikowitz. They have lost their last 10, have the Pilots. One and one the count. Raider 0 for two, fly ball to left and a fly ball to right for the former Roncalli Royal. Just a bit high. Two and one. Ground ball foul. Coach Bacon casually steps out of the way of that one. Good eye by Ryder. And his job is just to get on in this situation. Any way you can do it. Sky high fly ball. Again, Coleman calling off everybody. He's got this one tracked, and there's one down. Well, the Bethel bus driver thinks this one's over because he started to move the bus to get in position. He has faith in Mike Owens to close this down at the bottom of the seventh. Well, Mike Owens has earned his playing time today. Pitch a heck of a ball game. Had a little trouble in the second, but has gotten out of it. Damage done from that point on. And he's got his chance to go full seven here. You ready for the dad joke of the day? Yeah, I'm not going to give you a choice. Uh, you yeah, can say yes or no either way. It didn't way. matter. It was coming anyway. Yeah. Mason at the plate. Got a pair of base hits today. You know what they refer to? What they call the Bethel University bus driver? The pilot? A pilot, yes. I didn't say it was a good one. The Mason got clipped. Yep, hit him on the shirt. Well, any way you can do it. You'll see the shirt ruffle right there. Great job again by our cameras to catch it. So the tying run now on deck for the Knights. Huntley doubled. Driving in a run, driving in Mason back in the second. One for three for the day in total. I don't know if you're running Mason in this situation here. That's in for a strike. This game just right at the two-hour mark as we speak. Outside corner, absolutely 0-2. Ground ball could be two, six, there's four, and there's three. And that is that. They're going to make sure that the home plate umpire agrees with the call, I think, from first base. But I thought that was pretty clearly a double play. Yep, absolutely, he's out. And the replay confirms it, that's that. Double plays turned in both the sixth and the seventh by the Pilots, and this ends in a double header split. 6-3, Bethel takes game number two. John, your final thoughts on the afternoon? Well, just Marion couldn't get anything started at the plate in the second game, you know, all those hits. But, again, give a lot of credit to Ty Mikowitz on pitching a heck of a ball game. Didn't get any free pass until that 6-7th inning, but didn't cost any damage. The full, complete game. 
and good pitching performance. Again, so Mikowitz gets his second win of the season, snaps a 10-game losing streak for Bethel. They get their fifth league win and 10th win in total. Marion now 21 and 18. They are 16 and 12 in league play. Join us tomorrow for Marion Lacrosse as they take on Siena Heights at 5 o'clock. For now, goodbye from Marion. Bethel takes game two on the ISC Sports Network. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith or our Franciscan values. It's not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. It's that Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. 